Greetings and welcome to Jeffrey Gold Films. Today we're going to review a 1999 movie directed by Chris Roberts, who directed The Punisher, Outlander, and The Jacket, all three movies I enjoy and will one day review. He also directed like all video games related to this, and some of them starred Mark Hamill, who's also in this but only as a voice. So let's review Wing Commander. This movie starts out in 2654 where an interstellar war rages between the Terran Confederation and the Kilrathi Empire. After a cool map intro, we end up at the Vega Fleet headquarters in the Pegasus asteroid belt. Coffee Guy goes on a bathroom break just as a huge fleet attacks and bombs the base, but in his defense, there wasn't really any time to react. The Kilrathi invade the base and they want the Navcon AI because it has the coordinates to everything and it'd be a strategic advantage for them over the Confederation. The general wants to break the glass so he starts shooting it. You would think he would know it's bulletproof. So instead he launches a rocket. I'm not sure what's on it or where it came from, but the station's destroyed after. Next we're on a warship with Admiral Joffrey, who's played by David Warner, who was in the best Star Trek movie. Signal all ships to mark our course and make full speed for Earth. I need to know what the Kilrathia are up to, Richard. Do we have any more ships left in Vega? Just one, sir. The Tiger Claw. They look over a map and make full speed to Earth. Apparently the Tiger Claw is the closest ship to the Kilrathi and the Diligent is on its way there with replacement pilots and they want to relay a message through them. Maverick who is played by Freddie Prince Jr is on his way to the bridge and he's one of the replacement pilots on the Diligent and the Admiral gets a hold of him and wants him to take a data chip to the Tiger Claw. He actually fought along his father in the Pilgrim Wars. That one line is world building which is helpful. The captain of the Diligent says we're going to take this beacon 147 and he gets Maverick to pilot it. Maverick has this cross he wears under his shirt he got from his mother and it's a relic from the Pilgrim Wars and the captain says there's been no new star charts that have ever been charted since the Pilgrims were defeated in that war. Maniac who's played by Matthew Lillard from Scream and Hackers increases speed against the captain's wishes which gets him pulled into a gravity well and Freddie Prince Jr has to go in there and save the day and he does the jump. They survive and they get to the Tiger Claw and Maverick goes hands deliver the communique to Captain Sansky and we meet Commander Paul Gerard who's a bit of a racist dick. You wouldn't be related to Arnold Blair, would you? He was my father, sir. He married a pilgrim woman, didn't he? Yes, sir. Pilgrims don't think like us. Maniac and Maverick check out the flight deck and look at the old ship. It's not the newer Hornets that they flew at the Academy. And we meet the lovely Saffron Burroughs, whose call sign is Angel, and she's his wing commander. What are you doing on the flight deck? Uh, getting acquainted with our new surroundings, ma'am. They go to the mess and they make some friends and the Admiral calls the captain there and he says use Tagger, the captain of the Diligent, because he knows that space well. And an Angel tells them that if you die, you don't exist anymore. The captain tells Tagger that he doesn't trust them or the data, so he shows him some proof and he has his complete trust now, but not the commanders because, you know, he's still a racist dick. Maniac begs his best friend to take the cross off because he's always going to be dealing with shit if he keeps wearing it. We see that the Concordia battle group is racing to Earth with a ton of Terran ships. Out on patrol, Maniac and Forbes do some risky maneuvers which really pisses off Angel, so Forbes has to go apologize with Booze. I was just showing off a bit in front of Maniac. Maniac. <laughs> Lieutenant Marshall. <laughs> he has a new call sign. I see. Maverick visits Taggart and asks him why people hate pilgrims and why the war started. And we learn that pilgrims had a gift for navigation, so much so that they just started living among the stars and they really distanced themselves from Earth and people started to think that they thought they were gods. The Tiger Call has to get to the Ulysses Corridor and there's no fast way to get there so they're going to have to do a risky jump. So they do a level 5 jump over a class 2 pulsar and it works. And then Angel and Maverick go out on reconnaissance. They cut their power and hide in the asteroids to avoid scans but it doesn't work and they get spotted so it's weapons hot. But they count like 14 of them so they get the hell out of there and we get some more racist comments from the commander. It's well documented that pilgrim saboteurs have been responsible for much of the Confred's problems in this war. Did they have me targeted, Lieutenant? Now come on, this is sterile conjecture. The commander wants to take out the Kilrathi communication ship, but Tiger says that will leave the Tiger Call vulnerable, but the captain pulls rank on him and says, screw you, we're doing it. Which was a mistake. Maverick visits Angel and tells her that his daddy died fighting for the Confederation, but that his mom was a pilgrim. Her parents died too, and ever since then she's never been able to get close to somebody, and that's why people don't exist when they die. Also Forbes and Maniac are getting it on. 
Before they head off on their mission to destroy the communication ship, Blair's a bit of a dick to Maverick, so Angel assigns Maverick to her wing. And they head out there and Tigard says it's a trap and they shouldn't be doing this, that they just left behind these decoy ships and they're going to go attack the Kilrathi. But she pulls commander rank and she's just like, no, like you have no authority here, you're a civilian. So he gives her some codes to punch in, which points out that he's a Commodore in naval intelligence. So she should listen to him. Listen to me, Angel. If I'm wrong, you'll miss out on taking a couple of freighters. But if I'm right, the Tiger Claw could already be under attack. And he was right. The Tiger Claw is under attack by three Kilrathi starfighters, two destroyers, and one battleship. So they engage. The Tiger Claw takes a couple of torpedoes, and the captain gets injured even though he was strapped to his chair. Taggart is hiding among some wreckage and he takes out a battleship when its shields goes down. And Maniac and Forbes are chasing after people when they're not supposed to and they're supposed to come back and regroup. And Maniac takes too long to shoot one so the ship actually flies back and hits Forbes' ship. Open fire! Shoot him! You better open fire or I will! Oh, they go to land on a ship, but Forbes crashes, and Maverick has to stop his friend from running outside because he won't survive outside the shield. Angel's very sad because she has to give the order to push the wreckage off the deck. She's also pretty pissed and points a gun at Maniac, but Maverick convinces her not to shoot him. The Tiger Claw manages to land on an asteroid, and it's very submarine-like, but they get a little too excited and make some noise. They're following the decoy! They've missed us! Yeah. 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 Come on! Quiet! The Kilrathi bomb craters, which actually causes a breach, and Maniac has to tie a cord around himself and save Maverick. It causes some internal damage to him. And Maverick has a talk with Angel, and it's a nice little scene because it humanizes her a bit. So Angel tells Maniac that she needs her best pilots on the flight deck in 5, and they load up Marines and Taggart's ship, and their plan is to go over to the communications thing and steal fuel cells, because that's what they need. We get to see the Kilrathi, a very cat-like alien race. Wandering off on his own, because why not, Maverick finds the Pegasus Navcom and the Kilrathi jump coordinates. And if they can get those coordinates to the Admiral when the Kilrathi jump out to attack Earth, they'll have their coordinates and they can just wipe them out. The Tiger Claw is too big to sneak past the Kilrathi fleet and warn the Admiral and give him the coordinates. So Tiger says they should send Angel and Maverick. Only Maverick can really navigate without a Navcon, and he shows him his faith. If you believe you need faith. And a fun little fact, Ubuntu in this is Panaka from Phantom Menace. It's gone. It's a skipper missile. The mission already goes south. Angel has to eject after taking out a cloaking missile and her and Maverick have a moment, but he's got a mission, so he has to ditch her. She's gonna be out of air too. The Kilrathi battled the Tiger Claw, but the Tiger Claw takes some hits so they can deliver a killing blow. Open fire! fire. 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 Maverick jumps, but he's being followed by a Kilrathi battleship, and that battleship could just head straight to Earth and destroy it. And the fleet gets his message, but they ignore that battleship, and they hang in a low orbit of Venus and just target the coordinates. And they blast away the Kilrathi as they come. Maverick lures the ship into a gravitational well near Beacon 147, and the ship gets pulled in, but because he's lighter, he's able to get out. He burns out all his power, but they pick him up anyways. Maverick gets taken aboard the Admiral's ship, and we found out that Taggart went to go find Angel, so, you know, he wants to leave there and get back aboard the Tiger Claw. And he does. He reunites with Angel, and they kiss. And that's where the movie ends. It had a $30 million budget and only made $11.6 million back, so that's a pretty big bomb, but honestly, like, who wanted a Wing Commander movie? Freddie Prince Jr. was quoted saying, I can't stand Wing Commander. I can't watch one scene of that movie. I read the script and loved it, and so did my buddy Matthew Lillard. We both got the parts, we went to the location, and they said, here's the new script. And the new script was a piece of shit. 
like almost all video game adaptations, they didn't stay true to the source material and they changed the look of the Kilrathi and they invented this whole Pilgrim War thing and like none of it was really close to the video game. So all the fans that are actually wanting to see this were disappointed. So who did they make this movie for then? We got Mark Hamill in this, but he was barely in this. He was just the voice of Merlin, which was like Freddie Prince Jr.'s AI on his ship. He did go on to do a lot of the video game clips and actually do some live action stuff there, but yeah, barely in this one. There were a lot of good character actors in this, and honestly, the cast wasn't that bad, and the characters weren't written too bad. I did actually kind of prefer the Pilgrim thing as opposed to not really knowing anything else about Wing Commander, but... <laughs> I will say this after having watched it in theaters and then again recently watching it, it actually holds up pretty well. It's kind of like this whole naval battle thing with a bunch of strategy and you know you add in a little fun running around pilots and stuff. Ship design really wasn't that cool. Um, I would expect something better from the future. It's more like a worn down kind of like we're barely surviving battle thing. Kind of like an X-Wing but not even as sharp as an X-Wing. Pose X-Wing. Best X-Wing. Paint jobs. That's where it's at. So in the end, this is a perfectly watchable B-movie, and if you like Wing Commander, well guess what? There is a ton of video games out there and a lot of books, so you can immerse yourself in the entire world of Wing Commander if that's your thing. Well, as always, thanks for watching.